Hello everyone, I am going to show you how to place a character shot on a green screen into Unreal Engine. In case you don't know, Unreal Engine allows you to create any kind of locations. There are already a lot of scenes as well as libraries of buildings, plants, furniture, cars and other objects. This program significantly expands our capabilities in creating videos, music videos and even movies. Let's clarify two things up front. First, today we will not be talking about game creation. We will only focus on creating videos, specifically using the sequencer in Unreal Engine. Second, if you plan to place a character into a scene from Unreal Engine, it is often easier to create the video of the scene in Unreal Engine and then combine that video with the character in After Effects. However, if you want to immerse the character into the scene, to have objects pass between the character and the camera, or to have the character reflect in the scene's objects, such integration will look much more convincing. That's what we'll be focusing on today. Alright, let's get started. Open After Effects and drop in the clip that was shot on a green screen. Drag the clip onto this icon and the composition for it will automatically be created. Now, we trim off the unnecessary beginning and end of the clip so we can work only with the desired section. This segment lasts 15 seconds. Let's make the entire composition 15 seconds long. During filming, the camera wasn't perfectly vertical. We'll rotate the image by 2 degrees. Now, using a mask, we cut out the unnecessary surroundings, leaving only the green screen and the character. To make the green background transparent, we'll use the key light 1.2 effect. We use the eyedropper tool to select the background color. We switch to screen matte and by adjusting the effects settings make the background completely black which means completely transparent and the character white which means opaque. During filming I didn't light the background evenly so there is an unfinished area on the right side. We'll work on this part separately. We duplicate the clip, remove the mask from the first clip and create a new mask. We go back to screen matte mode and adjust the settings so that the background becomes completely black. We switch to final results mode. Now the background is transparent and the character is opaque. There is an issue with the boot it reflected the green background and now there are holes in it. Let's patch this area. We duplicate the clip again, remove the key light effect and remove the mask. Then we create a new mask around the affected part of the boot. We apply the spill suppressor effect. We temporarily disable all effects so that we can use the eyedropper tool to select the green background color. We want to suppress this specific color. We restore all the effects. Now, we add the color balances effect and adjust the saturation, brightness and other settings so that the patch blends in seamlessly with the rest of the boot. We select all three layers and click pre-compose. These three layers are now combined into one clip. If you double click on it, you can go inside and edit all the layers separately. But in this composition, everything appears as a single clip. Now, we apply the curves effect to increase the contrast. I know that the scene we will be placing the character into requires higher contrast and a slightly bluer tint. We add some blue tones and we're ready to export. We save, we click export, add to render queue, we choose the PNG sequence format, making sure to include transparency, RGB plus alpha. We select the folder and file name for saving. We click Render. After Effects starts rendering. In the folder we selected, new frames begin to appear as After Effects renders them. We open Unreal Engine. We choose a new empty project under the Film and Video section. We select the folder and name. We launch Epic Games and go to the Library section. Here I can find the scenes I already own. I purchase them in the Marketplace section where there are both free and paid scenes. I find the scene we need which is Polar Sci-Fi Facility and click the Add to Project button. I locate the project I just created and the scene is added. We open the content drawer and select Polar Facility Daytime. The scene is overloaded with graphical elements. We press the G key and the additional graphical elements are hidden. The camera moves too fast, so we switch to the second speed. There is an opening to the outside, a hole in the wall with some sci-fi mountains outside. Here is the spot where I want to position the camera. I want to place the character between the back wall and these white spots on the floor. Snow is falling here and it will fall in front of the character. Sunbeams are shining 
smoke is rising and the character's reflection will be blurred on the floor. We create a new camera and adjust its focal length. I shot myself with a focal length of 50 mm, so we set the same here. We also look for shutter speed and set it to 50. This matches the 25 FPS, which is the frame rate I used when filming myself. We press G to see additional elements again, including the camera. Right now, the camera preview window is too large and blocks the screen. Let's make it smaller. Go to the program settings and find the camera preview size setting. Its current value is 5 units. Let's reduce it to 3 units. Now it doesn't block the view. We take the camera and move it approximately to where it will be located. Now, let's rotate it 90 degrees and shift it to the center of this path. Now let's create a plane. This will be the screen where the character's video will be displayed. There it appeared in the distance. Take the camera coordinates and copy them into this panel. The panel will move exactly to the position of the camera. Let's move the panel a little further away from the camera and turn it to face the camera. Now the panel and the camera are on the same axis and are perfectly aligned with each other. Therefore, the panel is exactly in the center of the frame. Let's create a new folder for our assets and materials. Go into it and create a new level sequence, which is like a timeline for our video sequence. We give it a name. Double click. We open it. First, we set the frame rate to 25 FPS. All projects, all your videos and clips should have the same frame rate. We take the camera, drag it into the sequencer and it becomes the main camera of this sequencer. We select the panel and make sure it is facing the camera. We look at its gizmo arrows. We see one vertical arrow, one horizontal arrow and the third one is pointing directly at us so it appears as a dot. I made a small mistake. I should have clicked this button and switched from global coordinates to the local coordinates of the panel. Only then should I have checked that the third arrow was pointing directly at the camera. In this case, my mistake isn't critical. In local coordinates, it would look exactly the same. But if you are positioning your panel, you should switch to local coordinates and ensure that the panel is facing directly at the camera. This way, the video proportions won't be distorted. Let's exit the camera view. Move the panel to its place. Also, move the camera back. Before moving the camera further, let's make the panel movable and make the panel a hierarchical child of the camera. Now, when the camera moves, the panel will always face the camera. The panel now follows the movement of the camera. When I move the camera down, the panel moves down as well. Let's switch to the camera view. Lower the camera. As you can see, the panel moves down. Now, I'll tilt the camera up, slightly lower, and the panel also moves up. The panel is always facing the camera. Now, let's move the panel to the floor. For this, we'll switch to local coordinates. The panel will descend not in global coordinates, but in its own, moving diagonally like this. We click save. Now, let's set it up so that the video of the character plays on this panel. Create a new element called media player. Check the box to create a texture. We give it a name. Two elements are created, a media player and a texture. We'll need another element, an image media source. Give it a name. Double click it and select the desired video file, or rather the first frame in the PNG sequence. We click open, we set the required frame rate, 25 FPS, we click save and close. Now take the texture and drag it onto the panel. When we do it, a new material is automatically created. We go to the sequencer and add a media track. We click the plus sign and select our image media source. We right click, go to properties and here select the texture we need. And finally, we have the character's video playing on this panel. However, it's upside down. Let's fix that. First, I want to remove the camera panel hierarchy. I want them to be separated from each other. I drag the panel from the camera's child state into the root folder. This can sometimes cause a glitch where the panel jumps to a different place in the scene. This might happen because we configured the panel's position relative to the camera. And now, when we move it into the whole scene, it can take the same position relative to the scene's origin. To prevent this, we create a new keyframe on the transform track in the sequencer. This keyframe locks the panel's position, rotation and scale in our sequencer. Now the panel won't jump anywhere. We rotate it. It's important that the object's local coordinates are selected so that the panel continues facing the camera. 
we rotate it 180 degrees and lock the new rotation in the sequencer. Let's edit the scale. The scale lock is currently open. This means we can edit the scale on each axis separately. The aspect ratio of the frame I filmed the character in was 9 by 16. Let's set the same aspect ratio here, 4.5 by 8. On the scale track, we also click create keyframe to lock in the current scale. We click the lock icon to fix the scale. We reduce the panel. We fix the size again. We drag the panel higher. Let's check how it looks in the camera. If necessary, we can edit the scale and position. To save our changes, be sure to click Create Keyframe. We can simply click on the keyframe of the transform track and then the scale, position and rotation will be saved altogether. The video of the character that we placed in the scene is located on a flat panel. In other words, it's not a 3D character, but just like a flat cardboard cutout. If we light it with Unreal Engine's lighting sources, it will be obvious that it's flat. Therefore, such lighting won't work. We open the material and change the mode from default lit to unlit. Now our object, this panel, does not receive light from the scene's lighting sources, which is why the character is completely dark right now. We open the material again, and now we drag the texture image, meaning the video, into the emissive color section. Now the panel is glowing, lighting itself up like a television screen. We save, close, and see that the panel is glowing too brightly. Let's make it dimmer. We create a new multiply node. We'll multiply it by 0.5, meaning we'll reduce the brightness by half. We save, close, and check. It's still too bright. Let's make it even dimmer, multiplying by 0.1 meaning now it's 10 times darker. We'll leave it in this state for now. We enter 375 frames. This means that the sequence will be 375 frames long. I think that's about 15 seconds. We extend the camera and stretch our video track to the end of the entire video. At the end, we see a vertical line. This is where the video track ends and then it starts playing again. In other words, it will loop. We won't play it until this point. Now. Let's move on to the camera settings. Aperture. The more we open the aperture, the lower the value we enter, the blurrier the background will be. We enter the minimum possible value, which is 1.2. Right now, the character has become blurry because the focus is not set on the character. We go to the focus section. We change the focus method from manual to tracking and select the object we want to track and focus on. This is our panel, which is at the very bottom. Now, the focus is set on the panel, meaning on the character. When we change the aperture, in theory, the larger the value, the darker it should get, but whether it's set to 16 or 1.2, the brightness remains the same. This is because Unreal Engine has an element called post-process volume, which allows you to adjust exposure, and in this scene, there are three post-process volumes. We won't be using them, we'll delete them and create our own. We create a post-process volume. First, we find the setting called Infinite Extend in it. We check this box, and now all the settings we make in this post-process volume will apply to the entire scene. We find the Exposure section, select Manual Exposure Mode, and increase the exposure to the desired brightness. Something like this. Now we go to the camera. At the start of the scene, we set a keyframe. We've locked the camera's position, rotation, and scale. I want to make the camera move. We could make a movement from right to left, but it will be noticeable that the character is flat. For quality movement, we would need to film against a green screen while moving the camera and then match the camera movement in Unreal Engine. We won't do that right now, but we can make the camera move forward or backward. This way, it's less noticeable that the character is flat. I drag the cursor forward along the timeline. We exit the camera view, grab the camera and move it forward. But we shouldn't move it in local coordinates, otherwise the camera will move along its axis as if it's flying upward. We need it to crawl along the floor, so we switch to global coordinates. Now, when we move the camera forward, it crawls along the floor. Once we've reached the desired point, we lock this position and set a keyframe. Now the camera moves from one position to another. We switch to the camera view and see how it looks. The scene lags a bit, but it's clear that everything turned out well. I think the character integrates nicely into this scene. Snow is falling in front of him, sunlight rays are shining, smoke is rising, and there is a slight reflection of the character on the floor. 
Let's save the changes. After saving, the character disappeared. It's a minor glitch and it's easy to fix. We close the sequencer and reopen it. The character is back in place. Now let's move on to rendering. The best rendering is done using the Movie Render Queue plugin. If you don't see the Movie Render Queue here, you need to go to Plugins, find this plugin and check the box next to it. After that, Unreal Engine will ask for a restart. You will restart and the plugin will appear. So let's start rendering. We open the Movie Render Queue, click here and go to the more detailed settings. Now I will add several settings and configure them to values that will allow the video to be exported in good quality, while also considering the performance of my computer so that the program doesn't crash during rendering. I won't go into detail about the values of these settings. We remove JPEG because we will be exporting in a different format. For exporting, we choose EXR. This is a good format for video export. We select anti-aliasing and set it to 4 and 4. We add color output. Usually, when I export video, I check this box. This means the image will be in a flat color profile and color correction will be needed later. Right now, I don't want to do color correction, so I will export without this option. But if you are planning to do color correction, export with this box checked. We open the console variables and add some variables with their values. We add game overrides, which is also necessary for good quality. Now we move to the last section. Here we choose the folder where the result will be saved. We give it a name, we specify the frame size. Once again, I explicitly said that we need a sequence of 25 FPS. Accept, render. Rendering is complete. We open Premiere Pro. Double click in the project window and select the first frame of the sequence. Set the frame rate to 25 FPS. Drag the clip to this icon and the new sequence is created. Now we can view our result. The snow doesn't start falling immediately, it starts slow and then picks up speed. So we will trim the beginning of the clip so that the snow starts falling at full force right away. Next, we go to color correction and slightly increase the contrast. Now our video is ready. That's all I wanted to share with you today. I hope the video was helpful. Feel free to leave your likes or dislikes depending on whether you enjoyed it or not. Everything is welcome. Any activity is good. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next videos. This was Ilya Cinema. Bye.